Well, let's talk more about that pack your calories in the morning because this goes against what a lot of the health and wellness experts are talking about these days, and that's skipping breakfast and intermittent fasting. And of course, when it comes to intermittent fasting, it's not a rule that you have to skip breakfast. You could eat breakfast and then, you know, like you talked about, cut off your last meal earlier. But let's get into this. Let's get into the science because I think for a lot of people, especially when they begin intermittent fasting, they're apt to skip breakfast and have more food later in the day. So let's let's get into the science a little bit more here and talk about what people might want to experiment with. Yeah, so that's exactly what you just said is exactly what I did. Uh, I, I come home from work. <laughs> and uh, for me, I get to be with my family. That's the one time of day that I really get to see them because the kids are all off to school and I don't get to see them in the morning. So that's exactly what I did. I said, you know what, I'm going to skip breakfast. And uh, despite all the things that I've heard in the past, you know, you know the, the 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 tales and and the things that you could pass down, you should eat breakfast as a king, uh, lunch as a prince, and dinner as a pauper, right? No, so we're just gonna throw out breakfast and uh, eat a good lunch, and then have a good supper, and that's it. Well, I did that for a while, and you know, not to say that intermittent fasting is all about losing weight. Because it's actually much more complicated than that. You're actually uh, uh, looking at trying to break things down and build things up. And obviously, when you break things down and rebuild it, it's going to be the same weight, right? But there was an aspect of it that I'd like to see some weight loss as well because I think that would be good. No weight loss. Nothing at all. No difference. Stayed exactly the same doing doing exactly that. Then I started to research this a little bit more. Uh, there was a study that was done in diabetics in China. And... What they did was they, they allowed them to do as much, eat as much as they wanted. They even allowed them to eat whatever they wanted. They did not restrict them. The only thing they restricted them to was the time of day. And, uh, instead of them eating at, you know, eight o'clock for breakfast, noon for lunch and six o'clock in the evening for dinner, they switched it up and they made them, uh, eat eight o'clock in the morning, seven or eight in the morning and then 10 or 11 for lunch. And then two or three o'clock in the afternoon for dinner. Okay. So in the, in that study that they did. So in other words, they front loaded it is what I'm saying. Okay. They, they made, they did not allow them to choose. They front loaded it in everybody. And uh, in that study, there was a 20% reduction in hemoglobin A1C. Uh, and that goes to the, to the light of whether or not, uh, this actually works in terms of insulin and circadian rhythm. Yes. The body is the most sensitive to insulin in the morning, and that's just your circadian rhythm. So if you want to take advantage of that, I mean, why would you want to, uh, if you're going into LA, if you've got to travel into LA, why would you travel at rush hour, right? You want to travel when there's no traffic. So if you have to have calories, why not do that when your insulin is the most sensitive so you don't need as much insulin, right? Because insulin secretion is the problem when it, in terms of growth. So if you want to, if you want to stack the deck in your favor, the science says, have your calories when your insulin is the most sensitive, and that's in the morning. Second thing, there was another study that was done, again, where they did the same thing. They restricted their, their calories to the morning, and, and this has a lot to do with circadian rhythm again, right? We can decide, hey, I want to do it here. I want to do it there. Hey, I want to go to 7-Eleven at 10 o'clock at night and have a Slurpee. I mean, we kind of know that that's probably not healthy, right? I mean, I was recently in Denny's. Uh, not, not to say anything about Denny's, but if you go into Denny's, you'll look. There's, uh, you look up on the, on the board, they've got breakfast, they got lunch, they got dinner, and then this new thing called late night. <laughs> this late night, right? This is, this is kind of what we're doing. I bet you that's probably where they, where they make their margin is late night dinners, right? This is what we do. We can choose, we're, we live in a society where we can do whatever we want whenever we want to do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. Okay. So what they did, was they, in the second study, they, they compressed everybody to the earlier portion, just like they did in the, in the Chinese study. Brain derived neurotrophic factor increased. Circadian rhythm genes improved. Uh, the sirtuins increased. You can talk about sirtuins. Sirtuins are those groups of genes that have been actually linked to longevity. So, you know, it's controversial and people obviously it's a very personal thing like when you want to eat no one wants to be told when they should eat or how much they should eat or what they should eat but if you got to understand that when disneyland closes that's when you bring in the people to fix the park and when disneyland opens 
that's when the guests come into the park. So you've got to deal with that reality. The reality is, is that over 50% of the genes in your body are timed exquisitely to your circadian rhythm. So you've got to realize that it's not just like you can choose whenever you want to eat or decide if you're going to intermittent fast in the evening or in the morning, but you've got to realize that there are consequences to those decisions in relation to circadian rhythm. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. If you want to stack the deck in your favor, the science says, have your calories when your insulin is the most sensitive, and that's in the morning. The conclusion is, is that are you increasing 